Greetings everybody, Nick DiVirgilio here, and today's video is on five ways to mic a snare drum. First thing I'll say is that there's more than five ways to mic a snare drum, but the first and third way I'll show you here today, in my experience, are used probably 95% of the time in live settings and in the recording studio. It's good to know the different ways to mic drums, but knowing the basics will get you through most situations. The very first thing you need to do before you even put a mic anywhere near your drum is to make sure your drum sounds good on its own. That means the tuning of the drum, the type of head that's on the drum, maybe the top head's really old and you need to change it with a brand new one, depending on the sound you're going for. Maybe you need some dampening like some moon gel or gaff tape or a wallet or some other kind of dampening method. Whatever you do, just make sure your drum sounds good first. The mics used most of the time for snare drums are dynamic mics. They usually pick up less ambience and leakage from other drums than condenser mics do. They're durable and can handle a ton of SPL. Snare drums are loud instruments, so you need a mic that can handle that. Condenser mics are used on snares too, but they can be more expensive than dynamic mics and are a lot more sensitive. The pickup pattern of the mic you use does make a difference. Cardioid patterns work well because the pattern is not too wide and not too narrow. It's right in the middle. Omni mics, which pick up the sound all around the microphone, are sometimes used, but you have to know what sound you're going for, and I would say it's more of an advanced setup. A good cardioid mic will get you through every time. There is a wide array of dynamic mics that work well for snare, but today I'm using probably the most used mic for snare drum ever, the Shure SM57 right here on the top and bottom of my snare drum. There's a reason why this mic has been around for so long and still sells like crazy. That's because it just works. The sound is clear, it can handle anything you throw at it, and it comes in at a great price. If you want to check out more mics than just the SM57 and hear examples, they're great articles from our friends here at Sweetwater. They go into deep detail about all kinds of different mics and you can even hear sound examples. Check out the links in the description below this video. I am using more than just SM57s for today's video because getting a great snare drum sound uses more than just the mic that is close to the drum. So I have mics all around me. For overheads, I have Earthworks SR25s. I have two above me here and I do have one in the room so you can hear the drums from in front like you would normally hear a drum kit. And for the kick drum, I have a Bayer Dynamic TG D70. I do have one extra mic that I'm going to throw up on one of the examples and it's the Shure SM7B. Okay, with all that said, let's get into the first way to mic a snare drum. The first way to mic the snare drum is to put the microphone just above the rim of the drum pointing towards the center of the drum head. This will give you a more precise sound because you're close to the drum and you'll also pick up the overtones that the snare drum make. Those overtones are not necessarily a bad thing. It depends on the style and the sound you're going for. With all that said, let's play the drum right now with just a single mic on the top of the snare drum. So just with this one mic right here, you should be hearing all of the nuance of the snare drum, every stroke of the stick, whether it's soft or loud, and hearing the drum ring if it has some ring in it. I have a tiny bit of dampening on this drum, just a couple pieces of moon gel on each side, just to tighten it up a little bit. But with this one mic, you should be hearing everything in a nice, clear, but slightly dark fashion. The second way we're going to mic the drum today is to take that same microphone and bring it off of the drum. You need to experiment how far you place the mic depending on your environment, but here I'm going to go about four inches off of the drum. The sound should be a little bit bigger because you're a little bit farther away and picking up more of the drum. With that said, here's this mic about four inches off the center of the head. The 
this could be a cool way to mic the drum if you don't have a lot of other drums around you. This is not a typical drum setup. Usually I have toms and other stuff and it's hard to place a mic this far away from the snare drum because just the angle of getting it in, maybe the tom is really close to the hi-hat. It depends on your setup, right? Also, when the mic is this far off the drum, you're going to pick up more of the other stuff around it as well. It's going to bleed in because it's not so close to that particular thing you're miking. So be aware of that when you do place the mic this far away. It may be picking other stuff up that you don't want in there. The third way we're going to mic the snare drum today is probably the most typical way of miking a snare drum, and that's with one mic on top, just above the rim, pointing towards the center of the drum. The other mic will be underneath, pointing up towards the snare wires. This is a great way to mic a snare drum because it's the snare wires and the buzz they make that is a snare drum sound. One thing to be aware of when you mic the drum like this is the phase coherency between the two microphones. When microphones are out of phase, the sound can become thin, and since snare drum microphones are pointed towards each other, they're usually out of phase. So, if you have a microphone preamp with a phase button on it, flip the phase on the bottom mic and you'll be good to go. If you don't have a phase button on your microphone preamp, you can do it after the fact in your DAW. Many simple EQ plugins have phase buttons on them. You can add that plugin to the track, don't engage any of the EQ settings, just use the phase button. With all that being said, let's play the snare drum now with the top and bottom microphones going. Here we go. So I'll mention it again, this is by far the most typical way of miking a snare drum, and it's used all the time. It's that snare buzz you want to get. Whenever I play something soft like a buzz roll or do some sort of marching beat, the snare wires are really engaged. So to have a microphone down there picking up that sound, you can blend it in with the top and give a nice full picture of what snare drums should sound like. One thing I want to mention when placing that bottom microphone, you want to get it close to the snare wires, but you also want it pointed away from things you don't want going into the microphone. So don't point the mic towards the kick drum or you'll pick up too much of that. You know, it is close to the kick drum down there. Maybe point it away from the kick drum, but just close to the snare wires. Keep that in mind when you're placing a microphone anywhere around your drum kit. If you don't want something else going into that microphone, point it away from the thing you don't want going in there. Another very cool way to mic the snare drum is to place the microphone on the side of the snare drum along with using the bottom microphone. What's cool about this is that you're basically miking the shell of the drum. You'd be surprised how much fatness and attack you get from placing the mic on the side of the drum. Along with using the bottom mic picking up the snare wire buzz, you'll get a great drum sound and you should have no worry about phase when they're in this position. The microphone I'm using to mic the side of the drum is the classic Shure SM7B. You can use other dynamic microphones for sure, but I've used this particular microphone in this configuration a number of times in the recording studio. It works really well on metal drums. I have a wood drum here today, but if you have a metal drum, it's really good for that. So I would say if you have the opportunity, try this mic position out. It sounds great. I'm gonna play the drum now for you so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Our fifth way of miking the drum today is by utilizing the overhead mics. Overhead mics are super important for the overall drum sound because they're picking up the whole drum kit from farther away. If you place microphones correctly, you can get a great drum sound with just two overheads, a snare drum mic on the top like this one, and your kick drum mic. Think of it this way. The mic that is close to the drum is like putting your ear right next to the drum. You'll hear that drum louder than anything else and it dulls the sound of the drum a little. When you step back and hear the drum, along with all the air around the drum, you're getting a much clearer picture of what the drum actually sounds like. That's why you put up overhead mics, and even room mics. Blending them together with the mics that are close to the drums is what makes the whole sound come to life. 
With that said, I'm going to play the drums now with the top and bottom snare drum mics on and the overheads and the kick drum. Here's what it sounds like. See what I mean? The whole sound is clear because of the overhead mics picking up the rest of the drum kit. You hear the low end of the kick drum, the brightness and the attack of the snare drum, and it's all picking up the air around the drum kit too. So these mics, the snare drum mics, and the overhead mics blended together are super important to make sure the drum sounds good with that single mic on its own, like this top microphone. When you play it back, make sure it's EQ'd correctly. It's not totally dark. You're not hearing any weird sounds but it's when you put it together with the other mics of the kit, the overheads especially, is when the sound will really come to life and you'll hear the full picture. And I meant to say, hear the full picture. And there you go, five simple but very effective ways to mic a snare drum. These are the basics, but once you get them down, you can start experimenting and trying other things in your recording sessions and the live gigs. Just get the basics nailed first and you'll be well on your way to a great drum sound. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. I'm Nick DiVirgilio. See ya. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Click right here for more videos just like this one or go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.